Hi everybody, it's Joe Krug from FinSuite. In this video, we're going over the FinSuite CMS library for Webflow. We're in the live example going through the filter component. Before we get into this example, you must understand how this works. The filter component takes text that's inside of a collection item and it filters that item in the grid based on the text. So we have our collection list item here. This is Webflow CMS generated. Each one of these pieces of text is a way for this item to be filtered in the grid. We have 2020, blue, fun, CMS false, branding. This one is 2017, red, not fun, use CMS true, web design. These are controlled inside Webflow CMS. We have the year, we have a rich text of branding, web design, we have color in a drop down, we have the toggle, and we have fun. Updating any of these will update that text inside the item and then change how that item is filtered. So updating filters and types and all of that is very easy and very quick and can be managed by you or the client inside editor. You do not need to visibly see this text on the page. It needs to be on the published site, but it does not need to be visible. In all of these examples, we're going to keep the filters visible because we want to show that it's actually working. But if you wanted to hide these on the published site, you can do that. I can hide this right here, just show project name, and it's still going to filter by all of these filter options. It's gonna filter by 2017, red, not fun. Everything is going to work. Does not need to be visible, just needs to be there. Let's jump into examples and see how this works. Let's look at example three, where we have two different filter groups. One filter group with a filter type of exclusive, one filter group with a filter type of multi. This is where it starts getting powerful. It's where you can start mixing and matching different filter groups and deciding how they work. Here we have our color filter group where we can select one at a time. This is exclusive. As we select red and then we select yellow, red is unselected, yellow is unselected. We can only choose one at a time and you can see this grid updating successfully with the correct color. Now we can add on with a multi filter type of services. So if I go and click branding, I'm only going to see blue and branding. Every single one of these inside the grid has blue and it has branding. If I were to also select development, let's see, we need to find, yep. We have one that has development with no branding. So we are now selecting multiple options. So we have development and web design, strategy, motion. We are updating the grid with multiple options selected while still maintaining our blue filter. So these are working together. The color and the services are working together, but they're filtering in different types of ways. This is super powerful as you start allowing the user to customize what is shown inside the grid. So we have red web design development strategy. All of these will have red with either web design development or strategy. Nice. So this is working. We have two filters going at once. Let's go inside designer and see how this works. We're in designer. We're going to look at the structure, the classes and data attributes that we have to add here. We have our Webflow CMS list and here we have our collection list class. We need collection dash list on our collection list element so we can target it with our FS library instance. This is not the collection list wrapper. This is the collection list and we have a class of collection dash list. Next, we need to define the parent wrappers of our filter groups, the parent wrappers, not the buttons. Don't care about that. Don't care about that. As you can see, there's no identifiable class or ID here because it doesn't matter. We're using data attributes to search through the items. 
Let's get back to the parent wrapper. We have a parent wrapper here of filters, wrapper, FLTR colors. And this one has filter wrappers, FLTR services. And if we go in inspector, you'll see that these two parent wrappers are right next to each other. They have the correct add-on class so we can identify them individually. And each of them has a different filter group. This is our colors filter group. This is our services filter group. Nice. That's the only thing we need in terms of classes. Now we have to go and define our data attributes to, to say what these buttons are actually filtering by. This one is filtering by blue. So filter by blue, filter by red, filter by yellow. Here we're filtering by branding, filtering by web design, filtering by development, as you can see, totally not case sensitive, filter by motion and filter by strategy. That's it. We don't have to do anything else in structure with classes or data attributes to make all of this work. Let's jump into custom code and see what we need. We're in the custom code. If you've been following with example one and two, the only thing that's changing here is another item inside of our array. We have a new filter group, so we need a new item in the array so that we can say, hey, we're filtering by the colors and we're filtering by the services. Let's start from the top and make sure we understand all of this. Before the closing body tag, we need to insert our F and Suite CMS library script. As you can see, this is not the real script file. When we launch, we'll have a hosted script file for you. Then we have our project specific script where we are running a function that happens automatically, right away, immediately. We are going to create a new instance of our FS library. That instance is going to target the collection list class. This is the class that we have given the collection list element of the dynamic list, not the collection wrapper, the collection list. All of this new instance is being held in a variable called projects grid. Projects grid is going to be used later on when we actually run the filter component. Before we do that, let's get our array here. We are creating array, which is a list, and the list is called my filters. My filters is going to hold all of the groups that you are filtering by. This can be an endless list. You can have 20 different filter groups if you want. In this example, we have two. As we get further in the examples, you're gonna see that we can really make this list long, and it's just adding another item in the list. Filter wrapper, we have the FLTR colors add-on class that we have given the colors filter group. We want that filter type to be exclusive. We're only allowing the user to select one color at a time. Don't forget this little comma because we have a new item in the list. And the next item in the list is filter wrapper FLTR services. That's the add-on class that we gave the parent wrapper of the services filter group. That filter type is gonna be multi. It's going to allow us to filter multiple options at once. And then we're closing up this array and now we have our array defined and we can go and use it right here. So we have our projects grid, we're gonna run the filter component and we have filter array, my filters. That's it, we've now added a second filter group. We're just calling the variable that we have up here. We have our active class. FLTR active, that's going to be added to every single one of these buttons as the active state when it's selected. Remember, you can use an add-on class in between the filter button class and the FLTR active class so that you can have super unique active classes. And then animation. Enable true, duration of 200 milliseconds, easing ease out with effects of fade and translate have 20 pixels on the y-axis. Please use a script generator if you are going to customize your animation and have fun with this one. That's all you need to do to set up this awesome filter system. That's effing sweet.